We've got more end of year reviews coming up on today's episode of Locked on Blue Devils. The season is over, but we're reflecting on all the highs and lows from the individual performances from Mike Krzyzewski's final team. Let's get into it. This is Locked on Blue Devils. You are Locked on Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another edition of the Locked On Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you so much for listening to our show today. Our show is brought to you by our friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online, a proud presenting sponsor of Locked On Blue Devils. Bet Online has you covered this season. With more props, odds, lines than ever before, bet online where the game starts. On today's show, a Wendell Moore Jr. season review. The same for Trevor Keels and Mark Williams. Going to be a whole lot of fun. Again, my name is JJ Jackson. I proudly serve as the host of Lockdown Blue Devils. We went on the air in March of 2021. Over a year's worth of excellent content. We appreciate you making Lockdown Blue Devils your first listen every single day. I'm on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. The show is on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. Earlier this week, we had a Mailbag Monday edition of our podcast. Any questions that you ever have about things going on in Duke Athletics, email them, LockedOnBlueDevils at gmail.com or send us a message on Twitter and I'll answer those questions the next time we do a Mailbag Monday installment here on the program. Be sure to subscribe and follow Locked On Blue Devils for free wherever you get your podcasts as you'll get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it comes out each day. Be sure to also subscribe to our Locked On Blue Devils YouTube page to watch the show daily. Thank you for making Locked On Blue Devils your first listen every single day. Let's get right into today's show. It's our first player that we're going to review, the captain, Wendell Moore Jr., who just completed his third year, his junior season, with Duke men's basketball. Wendell War number zero for Duke, 20 years old out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Going into the year, we knew that Wendell Moore Jr. was going to be the leader of this basketball team, and boy, was he ever. What a great leader he was. He was handed the keys to the team before the year ever even started. You knew what kind of pressure there was going to be on the Duke men's basketball program, knowing that it was Coach K's final year, knowing that for the first time in 25 years, Duke did not make the NCAA tournament. They didn't make it in the 2020-2021 season, and so now Duke's got to get back to the tournament. That's what we're used to seeing is Duke basketball playing in the big dance. And boy, did Wendell ever lead the way. It started from before the year ever even tipped off. You've got those media events at the start of the season, and Duke sent their captains, Joey Baker and Wendell Moore Jr., there to speak with reporters. And right away, you knew that Wendell was going to be just an excellent leader for this team. He was a top 30 recruit coming into the program. Wendell, of course, had that big buzzer beater in his first meeting in Chapel Hill against the Tar Heels as time expired on the crazy game where Trey Jones forced overtime after a miss at the free throw line. And then at the end of regulation, Trey Jones missed the rim. And uh, Wendell was able to lay it up and in for the victory. This season, Wendell averaged 13.4 points per game, 5.3 rebounds per game, and 4.4 assists per game in 34 minutes out there on the floor per game. 50% shooting from the floor and 41.3% shooting from three-point range. The shot was what was most impressive to me from Wendell going into the year. 50% from the floor, as I said, that is an 8% boost from sophomore to junior season, and then 41.3% from three-point range. Get this, that is a 11% increase from Wendell at that three-point line from his sophomore to junior season. That's remarkable. He played in every single game this year for Duke, and boy, did he play a lot. 1,326 minutes out there on the floor for Wendell. That's the second most total minutes in the entire ACC this past season. You, you just know that he exceeded every expectation that anybody could have had for Wendell. He was all ACC second team this season, all ACC defensive team. He won the Julius Irving Award. Wendell won the Dr. J Award. That's given to the best small forward in the entire country, and he definitely deserved it. An Army, the second game of the season. It's Duke and Army. 
They played the first game against Kentucky at Madison Square Garden. And so here we go. First game, starting Coach K's final year. It's the first game full capacity in Cameron Indoor in nearly 20 months because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And all of a sudden, Duke's taking on Army. And Coach K, his final home game against the school that he used to coach, uh, final first home game, I should say. And Wendell in that game, terrific. A triple-double. Just the second triple-double. R.J. Barrett had one in the Coach K era, and Wendell gets one. 19 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists. And so he just continued to be the catalyst for the Duke basketball team throughout the entire season. And it was performances like that that really led the way. There was a long stretch at the start of the year before ACC play ended where Wendell Moore Jr. was the only player in the country to be averaging 16 points per game, five rebounds, five assists, and shooting greater than 50% from the floor. He stayed at that threshold in the rebound department, tailed off a little bit in the points and assists as Jeremy Roach was more of the playmaker down the stretch for Duke and sharing the basketball. Paulo had good assist numbers as well, but the shooting percentage never fell off. Again, an even 50% shooting from the field for Wendell Moore Jr. Terrific season. And up next, Wendell's got a big decision to make. I keep getting questions. All right, who's the most likely guy to possibly return? We think Jeremy Roach is a given at this point of the season when you get ready to look at Jeremy Roach's junior season next year and what's projected at the next level. You feel pretty good about him coming back, but you never know. Nothing's a guarantee or a given in college basketball in this day and age. But of the other five, Trevor Keels and Wendell Moore Jr. have always seemed like the most likely to to come back. Wendell would be coming back for his senior season, a benefit, as we said. He's just 20 years old. He's just a few months older than Paulo Bancaro. Paulo just finished his freshman season. Wendell just finished his junior year. So a lot of NBA potential still left for Wendell, and I would love to see that guy, uh, Captain Zero, I want to call him, come back for one more year. I mentioned in our interview review yesterday for Paulo how much the NIL deals were uh, a factor for Paulo and getting the market himself the first year that that was in effect. Wendell was the same way. Boy, oh boy, that guy had the big Bojangles deals uh, and a, a lot of awesome name, image, likeness deals that he was able to benefit from. So terrific season for Wendell Moore Jr. By far, he exceeded every single expectation that was placed on him. A true leader for Coach K's final team as the head men's basketball coach of Duke University. In just a moment, we'll talk a little bit about Trevor Keels as Trevor Keels just finished his first season playing for Duke basketball. We'll get an end of year review for Trevor Keels in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils is brought to you by Athletic Greens. All right, this is great stuff. I use this product every single day. I started taking AG1 and it's really helped me out. More energy, optimized immune system, hated taking pills and vitamins, but this was always something that I was able to accomplish and I felt great after taking Athletic Greens. It's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial flavoring, anything while still tasting good. It's absolutely terrific. It costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit, cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself. Make sure you check out Athletic Greens that has over 7,000 five-star reviews recommended by professional athletes, trusted by leading health experts such as Tim Ferriss and Michael Gervais. All right, Athletic Greens, to make it easy, they're given a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash college. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash college to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Moving forward on today's edition of Lockdown Blue Devils, my name is JJ Jackson. Let's take a look at our end of year review for Trevor Keels, number one on the back of his jersey this season for Duke men's basketball. That's another number uh, that we've seen over the past few seasons. A lot of one and done guys sporting one. Of course, Jalen Johnson wore it last season before leaving the program early. Vernon Carey Jr. wore it for the Blue Devils. Kyrie Irving wore number one for Duke basketball. Harry Johnson, I mean, a lot of players have worn that number one jersey. 
for Duke. Trevor Keels wore it this past year. 36 games played, 26 starts on the year for the freshman out of Clifton, Maryland. He missed three games with an injury, uh, but that did not affect him too much. As Trevor Keels was reunited with Jeremy Roach this season, as we know, they talked about it every single game. You were watching the game on TV. Hell, I talked about it a lot on this podcast. High school teammates at St. Paul the Sixth there in Virginia. Trevor Keels, his senior season in high school averaged 28.7 points per game, 7.2 assists per game. We knew he'd be a shooter. We knew he would be a scorer coming into his college career, and we saw it right out of the gates. First game of the year, Trevor Keels had 25 points for Duke in the game against Kentucky inside Madison Square Garden. All the cameras are on that game. It's kicking off Coach K's final season. It's the Champions Classic. It's an event that everybody likes at the start of the basketball season. It's Duke, Kentucky, Kansas, Michigan State. Those four schools always rotating. And for the freshmen for Duke, they're jazzed because they've been watching the event their entire lives mainly. And now they're getting the opportunity to put on that Duke uniform to play in front of tons of people in the venue, wherever it's being played at that year. Again, this year was in New York at MSG. And then everybody that has watch eyeballs watching it on ESPN. And so Trevor came out of the gates ready to play again against Kentucky, 10 of 18 shooting, 25 points. His drives were so impressive. Jay Billis during the broadcast, I vividly remember talking about how much he looked like a linebacker out there, just finishing through contact and playing uh, a tough physical brand of defense for Duke. His three-point shot was even fun to watch throughout the season. The numbers for Trevor, he finished with 11.5 points per game, 3.4 rebounds per game, 2.7 assists per game. Trevor played 30.2 minutes per game this season for Duke. That 11.5 points per game mark, third most on the team. Again, Paula Bancaro, the leading scorer for Duke this season. Wendell Moore Jr. was second. Trevor Keels was third. Keels shot 41.9% from the floor, 31.2% from three-point range, and 67% from the free throw line. A couple of other high-scoring games for Trevor against Clemson. He was 9 of 13 for 25 points, and he set his career high at Pittsburgh in the second-to-last game of the regular season. Again, that's the week where it's leading up to Coach K's final game being played in Cameron Indoor. It's going to be a big matchup against the Tar Heels. Duke had already beat North Carolina at their place by 20. Here's this Pittsburgh team. That's not very good. For Duke, you're being reunited with Jeff Capel, a former Duke player, a former associate head coach, who's now the head coach of Pitt. And Duke's got to take care of business. Trevor Keels did that that night. He had 27 points, his career high, to lead the way for Duke. In the Sweet 16, Against Texas Tech, that was one of the worst games we saw out of Keels this season. Just did not do really anything at all for Duke. Only out there for 14 minutes of the game. He was 0 of 3 from the floor, 0 of 2 from three-point range, and finished with zero points. Trevor Keels was held scoreless in the Sweet 16 matchup against Texas Tech. Fortunately for Duke, guys like Wendell Moore Jr., Paulo Bancaro, and Mr. March, Jeremy Roach, stepped up to give Duke the victory. In the Elite Eight game against Arkansas, Trevor was more effective, got back to his natural self, 25 minutes, four of nine shooting from the floor, one of four from three-point range for nine points. Final four game against North Carolina, Trevor had a good game. He scored 19 points against the Tar Heels, one of the top scorers for Duke in their final game of the season. Unfortunately, it ended in a loss. For the Blue Devils, and as we talked about on this very podcast throughout the season, I tweeted it out a good bit throughout the season that when he was scoring 13 or more points, Duke had not lost a basketball game. When Trevor played well, when he scored a lot, Duke was winning. And for the first time in that Final Four game, he got over that 13-point mark and Duke lost. So Duke finished the year 11-1 and when Trevor Keel scored at least 13 points. Duke was 20-3 and when he scored 10-plus points on the season. So really impressive numbers for Keels. When he scored the basketball, good things were happening for Duke. At the next level, I think the three-point shot tailed off a little bit. That's something that teams are going to rely on. And Keels standing at six foot four, a bulkier guard who's going to give it his all defensively. But I think he's got to play the two guard at that next level. And so you want that three-point shot to be there and to be improved. Like Wendell Moore Jr., I do think there is a chance that Trevor Keels comes back to play. In the ACC yesterday, we saw huge news where Amando Baycott Jr. at North Carolina did officially announce 
that he's returning to school for his senior season. It would be amazing news if Trevor Keels made the decision to come back for Duke for the sophomore season. You look at what a lot of people are projecting in terms of a starting lineup next season, that two-guard spot is one of the big question marks. I am such a big fan of Jaden Shute, and he's going to be a really good basketball player for Duke, the incoming freshman, but he's not a five-star guy. He's a high four-star recruit, and people don't see him being a day-one starter right out of the books. So Keels would immediately be one of the leaders. He'd be a focal point on the offense going into next season. I'm hopeful that Trevor Keels comes back. If not, I totally get it. Teams are going to love this guy. Duke players get drafted, plain and simple. If you play at Duke, you're recruited there for a reason. The coaching staff knows that you could play. And so we'll see whether or not Trevor Keels comes back to Durham for one final season. Our last review of the day, the big fella, Mark Williams. We'll talk about him in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils is brought to you by our friends over at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports information. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the Major League Baseball season. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. Final few moments here today of Lockdown Blue Devils. JJ Jackson is my name on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. Mark Williams, the last guy to review, the sophomore center for Duke, seven foot one, the big fella, and we mean it in the middle, war number 15 on his jersey. Mark Williams in his sophomore season out of Virginia Beach, Virginia, ended his freshman year. On a really high note, a slow start to his freshman season a year ago. Again, Duke did not make the NCAA tournament last season. Mark Williams was one of the freshmen in that class, along with Jeremy Roach, along with Jalen Johnson, who went to the NBA. And then he had Jamin Brakefield, who transferred to Ole Miss. Uh, Henry Coleman III transferred to Texas A&M. So it was a pretty deep freshman class for Duke. And Mark Williams, his last game of the season in the ACC tournament, Against Louisville, a win for Duke, he had 23 points and 19 rebounds. So you're feeling really good about what you're going to get out of him. He really started to improve throughout the year. Much better start to the end of his freshman season than it was at the beginning. I should say much better stats. And, uh, of course, Duke had COVID-19 in the Louisville or after the Louisville game in the ACC tournament. So they had to self-eliminate themselves, and they knew they were not going to be able to make the NCAA tournament unless they won the ACC. So pretty big expectations for Mark going into the year. Matthew Hurt also left for the NBA at the end of last season. So in the front court, it's really Mark Williams. Duke went into the transfer portal, got a couple of bigs, and Theo John from Marquette, and then in Bates Jones from Davidson. John, way more of an impact player for Duke than Bates Jones was, but a lot was placed on the shoulders of Mark Williams. And boy, oh boy, Did he absolutely deliver? One of my favorite players this season, 11.2 points per game, fourth on the team, 7.4 rebounds per game, that's second on the team, 2.8 blocks per game, that's fourth in the entire country. Very impressive numbers defensively for Mark Williams. He finished with 23.6 minutes per game on the team. Mark Williams shot 72.1% from the floor. When you're a big fellow, when you're 7-1 and you're right by the rim, a lot of them are going to be dunks. He shot 72.7% from the free throw line. 28 points against Syracuse this season was a career high for Mark. Dominant that game played in Durham. Duke played Syracuse three times this season, once in the Carrier Dome, once in Durham, and then once in the ACC tournament. In the ACC tournament matchup against Syracuse, That was the first game in the ACC tournament for Duke, who was the one seed, the ACC regular season champions. Mark had 15 points, 16 rebounds, and three blocks. He was a member of the All-ACC Defensive Team, the ACC Defensive Player of the Year. And for Mark Williams, he was the only qualified player in the entire country in the NCAA Division I ranks to shoot greater than 70% from both the free throw line and field goals. Again, the only qualified player in college basketball, to shoot greater than 70% from the floor and from the free throw line. In big games for Duke against UNC in the Final Four and against Virginia Tech in the ACC Tournament Championship game, 
Williams was held to just eight points and three rebounds against Virginia Tech, eight points and four rebounds against North Carolina in the Final Four. Foul trouble was a big one in that game against the Tar Heels. Theo John even came in, as we know, and had four fouls in the first half. And so Mark Williams was never really effective in that ball game. But when the guards were driving to the rim, throwing up lobs to Mark or just passing it to him underneath, he'd have big dunks underneath the rim. You'd see him do the head tap celebration that I'm doing right now if you're watching us on YouTube. And uh, it was a lot of fun. I, I love Mark Williams. It, it seems like he is a projected lottery pick at this point. So I do not think he's going to come back to Duke for his junior season. If he did, that would be terrifying for the rest of the country. But Duke's going to be in good hands with Derek Lively the second coming into the mix. Still waiting for the official decisions from so many Duke basketball players. Today is Thursday. April 14th, later tonight, we've learned, is the end of the year banquet for Duke basketball. And so things are starting to come to a close. Hopefully that means uh, that in the coming days we'll have more decisions about what the roster will look like next season. That was our player reviews today for Wendell Moore Jr., Trevor Keels, and Mark Williams. You can connect with me on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. Be sure to follow the show on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. Be sure to subscribe and follow this podcast right now on your favorite podcast app, and you'll get the latest episode of Locked On Blue Devils as soon as it's available each and every day. If you're listening to us on the Apple Podcast platform, press pause right now. Type out a five-star written rating and review. That really helps with the algorithms. I give Five Star Friday shout-outs to folks on this podcast who give us some praise. I would greatly appreciate it if you took time to do that. Check out the Locked On ACC podcast with my good friend Candace Cooper. That's going to do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.